Ji Shen from um, Cornell. Ji, are you? I, I see you. Can you take over screen? Yeah. All right. So I'll give you five minute warning. Okay. Okay. So uh, I would like first to thank the speakers for organizing this wonderful symposium and uh, giving me the chance to speak. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge uh, the students and the postdocs who made the studies possible first, otherwise I will forget. So uh, in particular, I will be talking about the results of uh, uh, two postdocs, you know, Yang Hao Tan and Yang Shi. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Professor Kim Fan Mack, uh, who co-supervised the uh, projects. Uh, we've been very fortunate to uh, collaborate with uh, um, the leading uh, theorists in the field, Professor Alan McDonald from UT Austin, um, Veit Elsa, my local colleague here at Cornell, and the Liang Fu from MIT. And then of course, you know, um, all those experiments uh, wouldn't be possible without the high quality uh, crystals, WSC2 from the Columbia Crystal Growth Team and uh, Bono Nitride Crystal from, uh, from Japan. Okay, so we have seen this picture uh, half an hour ago um, in the last talk. Um, so, uh, you know, really the uh, recipe to get into a strong correlation is to take, to make the separation between the charge big, right? So now um, let's consider uh, electrons on a lattice. Um, and here, this is the, uh, super lattice formed by the Moray pattern. And um, the uh, ratio of the interaction and the kinetic energy uh, scales as mass of the particle and uh, the uh, separation. Right? So for the um, Moray system with uh, a period on the order of 10 nanometer and for typical um, 2D semiconductor, like the transition metal that are collagenized, uh, we have mass on the order of half, then you can get this uh, ratio uh, to be uh, much bigger than one and to get it into the uh, strong correlation regime. Uh, furthermore, if you have very strong Moray potential, uh, which can uh, localize the, the uh, carriers a little bit better uh, to get it into the flat band regime, then you can further enhance um, this, this ratio. And I think that's the difference between um, the 2D electron gas we just saw in the last talk and what I'm going to talk about, 2D electrons on a Mori superlattice. And of course, um, you know, uh, th this um, scheme of uh, engineering uh, correlation using Mori superlattice of uh, 2D Van der material uh, has been first to realize in uh, the graphing system. Um, so uh, in twisted bilayer graphene, we have seen uh, amazing, you know, strongly correlated effects, you know, superconductivity, you know, mod-like insulating states and even uh, magnetism. And it's uh, not surprising that, you know, this field has been driven by uh, the Kim family and the extended Kim family. So I, I you know, so there, there are more names, so, uh, Please uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm not putting everybody down here. So um, in the uh, twisted graphing system, uh, strong correlation occurs uh, only very near the magic angle, which is about one degree. And it's very difficult to control this. So um, every device typically comes out to be uh, different. Um, so we would like to search for an alternative with a wider range of magical angle uh, and a much more robust correlation physics. And um, today I will talk about uh, Moray superlattices based on monolayer semiconductors with a finite uh, energy gap based on transition metal dark collagenites. And I believe in uh, ABC graphing, you know, you, you may see uh, similar um, effects and which you may hear later in this symposium. Okay, so uh, this class of uh, TMDs um, probably doesn't need uh, much introduction. Um, 
in, in this symposium. Um, so in the monolayer limit, um, they form um, this hexagonal lattice with A and B sublattice symmetry broken. Um, and uh, it's a direct band gap semiconductor with gap um, occurring at the K and the K, K prime points of, of the Brillouin zone. Um, mass is relatively big and uh, the lowest energy bands are spin split uh, because of the large spin optic coupling. And there is spin and the value through the spin uh, locking in the system. So now if we put uh, two uh, different TMD monolayers together, uh, the combination we are going to look at um, in, in this study is WSE2 and WS2, um, two monolayers. Uh, they have type two band alignment uh, in this particular case. And um, if you uh, angle align the two, either near zero degrees or 180 degrees, uh, they form this triangular uh, su super lattice uh, structure. And uh, because of uh, Bragg diffraction, um, the bands are fold, you form um, Moray mini, mini, mini bands. Um, and I'm just showing the, uh, a few lowest energy ones for holes and for uh, electrons. Uh, I would like to um, mention that, you know, in this hydrobilayer, uh, there is a relatively large um, lattice mismatch. Uh, it's about four degrees. So at zero degree, the, uh, the period is uh, about a nanometer. And because it's mainly controlled by the lattice mismatch, so if you are close to zero degree, you know, um, the period doesn't change uh, much. So um, this actually, uh, in contrast of uh, twisted bilayer graphene, uh, gives a pretty robust um, you know, lattice. So it's not very sensitive to a disorder of twist angle. So a few years ago, or two years ago, um, Alan McDonald and his group um, first uh, described or predict um, the TMD heterobilayer. Uh, the low energy physics can be described by uh, this very simple uh, single band Hubble model with two parameters. Uh, the interside hopping parameter T um, is calculated around uh, one to 10 milliEV. And the on-site coolant repulsion um, is on the order of 10 to 100 milliEV. And the interside hopping can be tuned by changing the twist angle uh, between the two layers. So it decreases. Uh, it, okay, so, so, so then you can imagine that uh, uh, we have a, a tunable system. You can tune the ratio of the U over T and get into the regime uh, with a large U of T ratio. Um, and, and, you know, so the, the, all those predictions of uh, the strongly correlated phases I expect to, to occur in, in the system. So the question is uh, from experimentalists, you know, how do you prove it? Um, so the TMDs uh, interact very strongly with light. Um, upon optical excitation, they form excitons. So what I'm showing here is the um, refraction contrast. You can think of it as absorption spectrum of uh, uh, this system. Um, and this is uh, angle mismatched and they just uh, behave like two separate layers. So on the left is the, uh, the, this main feature is the fundamental exciton in WSE2 layer. And on the right is the fundamental exciton in WS2 layer. And uh, the vertical axis is uh, the gate voltage, which changes electrostatic doping. So for example, positive voltage means electron doping, which will go into WS2 layer. And you can see spectroscopically that the uh, exciton oscillate the strength uh, decrease and, uh, and uh, there's a red shift. Um, and then if you apply a negative voltage, you introduce a holes into the system, which will go into the WS2 layer and you see similar effect, uh, redshift and decrease of oscillator strength. 
So now, um, if we uh, angle align the two, uh, in this particular case, it's uh, 60 degrees, or you can call it 180 degrees aligned uh, head or bilayer, and you see suddenly the, uh, the absorption spectrum becomes much more complex. So for example, this uh, single uh, exciton peak now develops into uh, three peaks visible here in this neutral, uh, charge neutral regime. And those are uh, moray excitons. And it happens you know, when the uh, moray superlattice potential is so strong, you know, much stronger than the kinetic energy of the exciton. And, and you can also have similar effects like what, what, what I show for uh, electrons, you have exciton band folding. Uh, but uh, I would like you to uh, pay attention to uh, this uh, doping uh, dependence of the exciton features. So let's focus into this uh, square area. Um, and this is uh, what this is. Um, and you can convert, you know, charge density to, uh, to, to the filling factor. So here filling equals one means one electron per uh, one hole here per uh, super lattice site. And because we have uh, the valley degeneracy, double degeneracy, uh, so filling factor one here means half field band. Uh, you can see that the intensity of this exciton varies with doping density, and this is uh, better captured here. And we did the simultaneous um, uh, electrical in-plane electrical transport measurements, and the peaks in the um, exciton intensity corresponds to a peak in the uh, resistance. And when we increase temperature, you know, the resistance um, uh, decreases um, as shown here. So this is a kind of a very typical uh, metallic, oh no, sorry, insulating behavior, right? So um, this uh, resistant peak at filling factor two um, is, can be pretty well understood. You know, you have a field band, and that's a kind of a typical band insulator behavior. Uh, the uh, insulating state at half filling um, requires uh, strong interaction. So when U over T is very big, uh, a Coulomb gap can develop. And then for half filling, you know, we have uh, this, this lower uh, Coulomb band, mod band complete field. So, so then this behaves like an insulator instead of a metal. Um, so uh, I think, you know, um, we have uh, uh, experimental evidence uh, to, to show that this state is consistent with a, a mod insulator. But of course, you know, in order to fully support this argument, uh, we need to look at the magnetic properties once the charge are localized, uh, which I will get, get into uh, a, a little bit later. So, um, and there are other uh, studies um, like on similar system, you know, either homobilier, heterobilier, and using optics and transport. Um, and we all see something uh, similar in, in the TMD Moray system. So I would like to uh, look at this feature a little more carefully. Um, if you follow the um, intensity change as doping, and you do see some extra bumps here. And those bumps uh, are Wigner-like uh, crystal, Wigner crystal -like states. And that was uh, first identified by um, uh, Feng Wan's group um, using um, optical techniques. So uh, we would like to study this uh, a little bit more uh, carefully. And uh, the uh, technique we developed to do that um, is uh, to use uh, excitons in uh, monolayer TMDs. So we all know that uh, excitons in TMD are just like, uh, you know, they form Rydberg-like states and um, the uh, ball radius um, is uh, relatively big. So for example, for the 2S state, the ball radius is uh, six nanometer. So the few lines are much beyond the extent of the material itself. 
Therefore, um, the state is very sensitive to the surrounding uh, background, uh, the dielectric background. So, so now if we put this uh, in the vicinity of uh, some 2D electron gas, so in this case will be a Moray super lattice, um, we will see a very strong um, uh, modification to the uh, exciton behavior. So um, if uh, this 2D electron is in the metallic state, we expect a higher screening so it will be smaller binding energy for the exciton and the lower oscillator strength. And if it's uh, insulating, then we'll see a larger binding energy and high intensity for the exciton. And this is a realization of uh, uh, this, this idea. So we have uh, uh, Moray super lattice here uh, and has the two gates, which can control the doping density. And uh, we have a very thin layer of uh, HBN on the order of a nanometer uh, to separate the sample from a single layer, a TMD as our sensor. Um, and the, the spacer kills direct electronic coupling between the sensor and the sample. Um, and because of the um, Moray super lattice potential, uh, the optical response from the sample and from the sensor actually fall into a different spectral window. And that's very convenient for us to see uh, their individual response. And furthermore, uh, the, the, the band alignments you know, are chosen such that um, for large range of uh, gay voltage, uh, electrostatic doping only uh, goes into the sample and keep the sensor charge neutral. So let's take a look at the experiment. Um, and this is um, the, the part of the spectrum. Um, I have shown you something similar before. So, so now the y-axis is the photon energy and the x-axis is the gate voltage. So this is for electron doping and this is for hole doping. And uh, what you see here is the lowest energy, the fundamental exciton uh, modulated by, by the Moray super lattice. And you see, you know, this, uh, this feature uh, changes its intensity with doping density. And, and that's what we saw before. And this is a response uh, from the sample itself. Uh, you can make a line cut and you see bumps here and there uh, corresponding to some specific filling factor. And they tell us something, but not very clear. So now let's look at the response of the sensor. Uh, so this spectral window shows the 2S exciton in the sensor, and you see lots of fine structures there. So let's zoom into there and take a look. So this is how it looks, uh, just a different color scheme. Um, so uh, the x-axis, again, is the doping density, and the y-axis is the photon energy. Um, the color scheme is such that if you see blue, and that means the oscillator strength is big, and if you see red or orangish, that means the uh, oscillator strength is small. So um, the largest uh, oscillator strength or the highest, you know, 2S exciton energy is right here when the sample is charge neutral. And that's uh, understandable because that's the largest band gap in the system. So the sensor sees a very strong insulating state. And we also see um, you know, strong response at filling one and filling two. And those are the uh, MOS state and the band insulating state we talk about. Right? And we also see a bunch of uh, um, structures, uh, like each of this uh, candle-like structure corresponds to an insulating state. So what are those guys? Um, so we um, uh, assign, um, you know, those uh, fractional states to uh, charge order states with uh, those proposed uh, charge pattern. And you can see here, you know, for example, for the one third, the electrons, you know, not only tries to avoid a single occupancy, well, double occupancy, they also try to avoid uh, neighbors, right? And this tells us that not just the on-site Coulomb repulsion is important, 
uh, the extended Coulomb interaction is, is also important when we compare to the, um, the bandwidth of, of, of the uh, system. So, um, and, and, and this is not something too surprising because in our uh, devices, uh, the gates are about 20 to 30 nanometer away. And this period is about six, seven, seven to eight nanometer. So in order to describe the system, uh, include this effect, uh, we need to include the, um, the extended Coulomb interaction and the model will be the extended Hubble model. So um, we um, did uh, this classical Monte Carlo simulation, um, you know, by, by taking the extended Coulomb interaction into account and uh, check those patterns. And we also check the uh, transition temperature measured from experiment and also from the uh, classical Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, they all agree uh, pretty well, okay. So um, let's discuss for a few minutes about, you know, the origin of, of those states, right? So in the limit when T equals zero, then, um, you know, those states um, are likely the, uh, the Wigner crystal-like states, you know, we, we've discussed. Um, but when you increase T, um, then uh, some of the charge can leak, you know, from their assign a position to the neighbors. So the, uh, the, the charge modulation becomes smaller. So this could be a charge density wave. And then if you further increase T, then you can melt this, this whole thing. So this is uh, at least our uh, current uh, picture. So uh, in, the, in the limit when T equals zero, uh, you know, this classical picture tells us that uh, the system should be symmetric about uh, the half filling because uh, empty and occupied seats are totally equivalent from um, electro electrostatic energy point of view. Um, and you know, if you, if you look at uh, what we have here, um, actually it shows uh, a, a, a little bit of uh, uh, quantum fluctuation. So, so T uh, likely is small, but you know, not, completely negligible because we see asymmetry about uh, half. And uh, we also see much weaker states for uh, filling bigger than one, you know, like this guy compared to those guys. Um, and we think that's because the kinetic energy for those guys are, are higher. So uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, there are probably some uh, quantum effects, but, you know, relatively weak in, in this system. So um, how much time do I have? Um, you have, I was going to give you a five minute warning at 117. So you have, um, you have time. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let me calculate. <laughs> okay. Um, me off guard. <laughs> okay. So, so now I would like to uh, talk about uh, the magnetic properties, right? Um, as I mentioned, you know, the ground state and the, the low energy excitation uh, of uh, mod insulators are controlled by the magnetic interaction of those localized moments. So uh, we would like, yeah. Yeah, you have eight minutes. Oh, okay, okay, good. And I, I won't I, bother you anymore. <laughs> okay, I, I, I tried to finish before that so people can grab okay. lunch. <laughs> so um, we um, would like to uh, probe the magnetic susceptibilities. So for localized, uh, for, for local moments, um, this curious wise picture um, describes magnetic susceptibility uh, sort of reasonably well. Um, so uh, at the high temperature, uh, temperature above the ordering temperature, uh, the magnetic susceptibility diverges. And that means, you know, the uh, wise temperature is zero if the system is paramagnetic uh, if it's ferromagnetic, um, this divergence occurs at a positive temperature. So the wise temperature is positive. And then for antiferromagnetic interaction, um, the, uh, 
magnetic stability, uh, if you extend it from high temperature to low temperature, diverges at uh, negative temperature, and you know the Y's temperature is negative. So um, by doing uh, this kind of uh, Curie-Weiss analysis of magnetic susceptibility, uh, we can infer the character of uh, magnetic interaction um, in, in the system. And uh, it's more convenient to, to do it uh, in uh, one over the magnetic susceptibility, just do linear physics. So experimentally, how do we measure magnetic susceptibility? Um, and we are talking about 10,000-ish you know, localized moments um, embedded in a large chunk of other materials. Um, and actually optics uh, is quite handy uh, for, for this um, uh, measurement because uh, we know in TMD, there is this optical selection rule. So the circular polarized light of a particular handedness couples exclusively to one valley or the other valley, okay? So um, if uh, the system is non-magnetic, then the absorption of left and right uh, circular polarization just is the same. But if uh, there is a net magnetization, then you'll get an imbalance between the two. So if you look at the circular dichroism, or, you know, so that's what I'm, yeah, I'm showing here, the response. Um, or if you look at the shift of this exciton peak, you'll be able to extract the magnetic susceptibility um, of, of, of the system. So for example, you know, the susceptibility uh, changes linearly with uh, magnetic fields uh, at low field. And after about one Tesla, uh, you get it into saturation. So we believe after one Tesla, um, all the localized moments are being polarized. So if you analyze the slope, um, you get the susceptibility. So um, for a filling factor one, that's our uh, mod insulating state, uh, we did the analysis, uh, we got uh, Curie-Weiss temperature on the order of uh, negative one Kelvin. Um, if uh, we uh, employed this uh, super exchange picture uh, for, for the magnetic interaction, which just says um, you have, you charge hop over and hop back, right? And the exchange interaction energy scales as uh, T square uh, over U. Uh, from our um, resistance measurements, uh, we already know the order of magnitude for you. Um, it's in this range. And we measured uh, the super exchange uh, energy. Uh, we can infer you know, the, the bandwidth. And indeed, you know, U over T is uh, pretty big on the order of uh, 20 in the system. Okay. So um, now we know how to do it. Uh, we just repeat the experiment for different doping. And uh, I want you to look at the uh, red symbol first. Um, this is the Curie-Weiss temperature uh, with negative sign. So when you see something positive above zero, that means antiferromagnetic. And the below zero, that's uh, in, in this plot, it's, it's ferromagnetic. So we see that, you know, for filling factor sort of lower than uh, 1.2, uh, it's antiferromagnetic anti and uh, we cross to somewhere, you know, close to zero. Um, so the experiment doesn't have enough uh, signal to noise ratio to say whether this is zero or this is, you know, uh, ferromagnetic, but you see some kind of uh, a transition here. Um, at the same time, if you look at the, the susceptibility, which are you know, those black dots, um, they sort of uh, um, diverge also near this filling factor. And then if you change temperature, you know, um, at low temperature, this, this uh, susceptibility just enhance significantly. And when you increase temperature, this whole enhancement just goes away. And, and this may suggest that we have, you know, a, a quantum a critical point here, but that requires a further study. 
so in my remaining uh, couple of minutes, I would like to uh, comment a little bit about uh, the magnetic property of the uh, the Jung, you know, the insulin states at the fractional filling. Uh, so uh, we did a more careful measurement of the uh, wise temperature. Uh, again, you know, you see something above this line, that means it's antiferromagnetic. Now I'm just uh, plotting the uh, fractional filling part, less than one. And, you know, so at filling one, you know, the temperature is about uh, negative one Kelvin we saw and increases a little bit. And then you see a, a big dip here, right at two thirds and a very sharp dip. And, and then, you know, below that, again, um, the temperature goes up again. So I would like to uh, discuss a little bit about what's going on here at two thirds, right? Uh, so this is the uh, charge arrangement for two thirds filling um, I, I have shown before. Uh, there are, uh, a couple of different um, exchange channels. So uh, we can have um, the super exchange as in mod state. So uh, for example, you know, this, the particle can hop to the, to the neighbor site and hops back, right? And this is the second order perturbation. So it goes like a T square and, and the uh, energy uh, gap is the U. And uh, for uh, the system we've already estimated, so it's around you know one Kelvin. Uh, but there is uh, another channel um, for two thirds. Uh, we have an uh, empty uh, spot right in the middle. So actually, you can uh, you know go for example, you know th th this guy can hop to the middle, and then this guy can come over, and this. This, this guy can go, go to the other side, right? So it involves uh, three steps and that's the next order uh, exchange. So this guy goes uh, T to the uh, third power and uh, the gap is not U, but you know, it's the um, nearest the neighbor uh, Coulomb interaction. And this um, for the parameters we know uh, for this particular combination of TMDs, uh, it's an order of magnitude or smaller. Um, so based on what we saw in experiment, uh, we think, you know, this channel probably dominates. So, um, and, and the, the, the value of uh, white temperature sort of also, you know, agrees reasonably well with, with this. Um, and uh, as a kind of further um, check of, uh, of, of, of this, this uh, understanding, uh, we introduce the gate much, much closer uh, to our sample. So in that case, um, you know, if the gate is only like a nanometer away and the, the lattice period is eight nanometer. So we expect the, the Vs, you know, the extended Coulomb interaction to be uh, fully uh, screened. And that can be observed in experiments uh, when we see the uh, fractional insulating states disappear. And at the same time, you know, the, um, this dip, the wise temperature dip goes away. So uh, we, we think we have a, a reasonably good correlation between, you know, this, this dip and the charge order state. So that's the interplay between the magnetic exchange interaction and, and also the, um, the charge ordering. So Gee, with this- I think you have to wrap up. Yeah, I'm oh, finishing. You are wrapping up, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I hope I convinced you that uh, um, uh, Vanderbilt, Semic Vanderbilt Semic Semiconductor Maurice system uh, provides a quite unique platform to study correlation. Uh, the parameters are highly tunable. And we've seen example of uh, extended Hubble model or triangular lattice um, based on this hetero uh, bilayer um, I showed. And optics is a, a very powerful technique to do this. Uh, we've observed antiferromagnetic mod insulating state at half filling of the band. And uh, we've seen abundance of charge order states at the fraction fillings. 
uh, a lot still needs to be uh, understood. And, and you, you're going to hear from King Fai tomorrow uh, about some of the properties of, of those states. And the magnetic phase diagram is, is, is very rich. So I'll just stop here. All right. Um, thank you for the wonderful talk. Um, we are um, running six minutes late, but the organizers uh, took some time at the beginning. So I'm going to take liberty and uh, you know um, let people ask questions. If you know, go in a few more minutes. If there's anyone with questions, Misha, you're muted. You're muted, Misha. I'm sorry. Yes, I was muted. Uh, yes, I said thank you very much. Uh, uh, very interesting talk. Um, um, how, how should I think about this exciton sensing uh, physics? So if indeed you have a Wigner crystal, which uh, yeah. on the cartoon level, you have some uh, field states and empty states, then shouldn't, uh, and, and they're fairly far apart, the latest constant is, I guess, larger than the size of the exciton. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't you have uh, then kind of like periodic potential and instead of, I'm thinking about maybe you have, uh, uh, whether you exciton is created on uh, on field side or empty side, you would have, I guess, different energies. So you should have some kind of line splitting maybe or instead of the change in reflectivity. Okay. Am I thinking? correctly about this or? Um, so uh, the, um, you know, the exciton bar radius is, um, I, I think, you know, I, I don't think we have the uh, sensitivity, the spatial sensitivity you are talking about, you know, whether the exciton right, you know, at the, the um, empty site or fuel site or different sites of the uh, Maurice Pilatus, uh, what we are seeing is uh, some kind of uh, average effect on the exciton states. Uh, something you uh, mentioned, you know, because if you look at um, the structure, you know, of, of uh, the spectrum, you know, it's um, more complex than uh, what the, the cartoon picture I described, you know, so that that I, I totally uh, agree. So you can, for example, you know, look at, you know, those features, you know, may ask what's happening uh, there, you know. So um, the uh, Maurice super lattice definitely, you know, has uh, effect on the exciton, not just in terms of, uh, you know, 2S exciton binding energy on this and that, it also imposes, you know, this periodic uh, structure. You know, you can think of it like a periodic to the potential, right? So they are going to modify the exciton behavior as well. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is, the size of exciton is like a, a nanometer, and lattice constant is more like eight nanometers. Yeah. Um, so uh, the exciton ball radius, yeah, is uh, a few uh, nanometers. True. So it seems like it's a very compact object, so it should have a sensitivity to local feeling. But so, okay, maybe, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but we are uh, probing, you know, a spot size of one micron. So you are uh, looking at the, you know, the average uh, effect of all, all those effects on the exciton. Okay, thank you. Chahal, quickly. Yeah, quick question. Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, if, uh, I have a question about the last slide uh, where you show that around two thirds you have a drop of the critical temperature. Can it be related to frustration in these lattices and maybe spin liquids? So this is not frustrated, right? The two, the, 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 this new lattice type. Okay. Yeah. Do you get frustration in any of the fractional filling? Um, so actually the fractional filling uh, makes this uh, less important frustration, right? So the, the mass state actually is, is more because it's a triangular lattice. 
um, and if you make it more dilute, you know, uh, this this is uh, a, a less issue. Okay. Um, maybe maybe one last question from Ji Ho Song. Yeah, can you go back to the charge order, the state uh, experiment uh, data? So I was actually going to ask the, the insulating states on top of the candle-like uh, mm -hmm. data. So is it from the 3S or is it the replica of the 2S? Okay, so that's a very good question. So let's first look at this feature, you know, that's the strongest one. So we believe this is a 2S and this is likely a 3S. But those guys are not, um, you know, the because we we know where to expect, you know, the the higher um, exciton states, um, and we think, you know, uh, likely what's happening here is that we are seeing the um, Mori bands uh, due to the the uh, super lattice. So um, that that the sensor, you know feels the periodic potential uh, from the, um, the, um, the sample. Okay, so, thanks. yeah. All right, um, I don't see any more raised hands at the moment. And I, we are, um, we've already kind of uh, gotten into 12 minutes of the break time. So I think we will um, stop here and Let's thank all the speakers for wonderful talks and uh, we'll be coming back